So, have you heard about this new AI model? It's causing quite a stir. Yeah, it's really shaking things up. Some are even saying it's surpassing the big names like OpenAI and Google. It really is. Um, and their approach to training is a big part of that. Oh. They've combined uh, reinforcement learning with fine tuning. Okay. It's given them a model with some really impressive reasoning abilities. I see. And get this, they did it all without relying on mountains of labeled data. That's pretty amazing. It is. What I find really interesting is that they've decided to make this technology available to, well, everyone. It's a big deal. They've released the model weights publicly. Yeah. And they even created a series of smaller... Uh, like distilled versions. Distilled it's, versions, right? Yeah. That's a uh, that's a game changer for the AI community, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. This kind of open access could really accelerate research and development. I think so, yeah. And it's a completely different philosophy compared to some of the other major players. Especially when you consider how cost-effective their API is. For sure. This could be a real opportunity for, well, smaller companies and developers who want to explore this technology. Absolutely, and without breaking the bank. Right. So, you ready to... Uh, dive into what makes this model tick? Absolutely. Let's get into it. Okay, so it's fascinating how they've gone all in on reinforcement learning mm. in a way that really departs from how everyone else does it. Okay. Like the typical reliance on supervised fine tuning. Yeah. They even developed a variant called Zero that was trained entirely without it. Zero. Yeah. How did they manage to pull that off? Well, they employed some pretty innovative techniques. Like? Like one called Group Relative Policy Optimization, or GRPO. Okay. You can think of it as a way to streamline training and keep costs down. Makes sense, especially with a model of this scale. Exactly. So efficiency was a top priority. From the outset, yeah. What else? Well, they also used this uh, dual reward system. Okay. It considers both the accuracy of the model's output oh. and how it presents that output. So it's not just about getting the right answer. No. It's about presenting it in a clear, understandable way. Exactly. They wanted to ensure that the model could communicate effectively. Hmm. That's pretty clever. It is. And to uh, guide the model's learning. Yeah. They implemented this simple training template. Right. It's like a blueprint. So the model can learn and adapt. Exactly. Did it actually work, though? Did Zero live up to the hype? Well, they tested it on the AMATH Olympiad test. Okay. At first, the model had a pass rate of about 15%. Mm. But after training, that number shot up to an impressive 71%. Wow. And get this. When they used a majority voting mechanism, okay. it even outperformed OpenAI's model on the same test. That's remarkable, especially for a test as challenging as the AMI. It is, yeah. It really highlights the power of their... Uh, reinforcement learning approach. It does, but they also ran into some limitations with zero. Oh. The output, sometimes it wasn't easy to read, and yeah. they noticed some language mixing as well. So how did they address those issues? Well, that's when they went on to develop the full model. Okay. They incorporated something called cold start data and fine tuning. Hmm. What is cold start data? Essentially, it's using a small set of high quality data to give the model a head start. Like providing some perfect examples. Exactly. Kind of like giving the model a taste of what good looks like. I see. Before it dives into all the training data. Okay. So almost like setting it up for success. Right. By showing it what to aim for. Exactly. And they believe this approach can also lead to better overall performance. So cold start data is like a catalyst for better learning and uh, improved output. That's a good way to put it. What happened after that? Well, after fine tuning with the cold start data, yeah. they launched into another round of reinforcement learning. Oh, wow. This time focusing on refining the model's reasoning abilities. So they doubled down on what made Zero successful. Yeah, but they also learned from that previous stage and made adjustments. Such as? Well, for example, they introduced a language consistency reward. Okay to discourage the language mixing they were seeing. Even if it meant a slight performance hit. They were willing to make that trade-off. It sounds like they were prioritizing clarity and user experience over um, raw performance. You got it. And to make sure the model could handle a wider range of tasks. Uh -huh. They introduced a stage called uh, rejection sampling and supervised fine tuning. Right, incorporating data from other domains. So it's like exposing the model to a diverse curriculum. Exactly. Helping it become a well-rounded student. That's a good way to think about it. How did they uh, ensure they were using high-quality data for this? They used a reward model hmm. 
to carefully select the data. So quality over quantity? Absolutely. Was that everything? Not quite. They then implemented a second phase of reinforcement learning. Oh, wow. This one focused on aligning the model with human preferences. Interesting. Things like usefulness and harmlessness. It seems they were very focused on building a responsible AI. They were, what did that involve? They used all sorts of uh, reward signals and diverse prompt distributions hmm. to teach the model what's considered helpful and appropriate in different contexts. It's like instilling a sense of ethics into the model. You could say that, yeah. It's like they were teaching the model not only what to say, yeah. but how to say it responsibly. Exactly. And finally, they used a technique called distillation right. to transfer the reasoning abilities of the full model yeah. to those smaller, more efficient versions we discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how they created this uh, family of models. It is. Each with its own unique strengths and potential applications. It really is. This whole development process is a testament to their commitment to, you know, pushing the boundaries of AI. Absolutely. While ensuring it's accessible and used responsibly. Yeah, that's impressive. It is. And the results, they speak for themselves. Oh, yeah. They've done a ton of benchmark testing. <laughs> And this model is consistently hitting state-of-the-art performance. Wow. Especially in tasks that really need uh, complex reasoning. It is astonishing to see a company, well, relatively new, mm -hmm. making such significant strides. It is. Especially given how fast AI development moves these days. Yeah. It really does make you wonder what the future holds. It does. We've seen incredible advancements in just the past few years. For sure. And it seems like the pace is only accelerating. It's exciting, but also a little bit daunting to think about, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, AI is already changing so many aspects of our lives. It really is. There's no denying its impact. From healthcare and education mm -hmm. to transportation and entertainment. Absolutely. And with models like this one pushing the boundaries even further, yeah. the potential is really immense. It's clear that AI is going to play an even bigger role in our lives. No doubt. But what does that actually mean for us? You know, that's the big question. What about the future of work? How are we going to adapt to all these changes? Those are questions we all need to be thinking about. Absolutely. As a society, we need to have some uh, thoughtful conversations yeah. about the ethical implications of all this, uh -huh. about the potential risks and benefits, yeah. and how we can make sure these technologies are developed and used responsibly. It feels like that's a conversation that needs to involve, well, everyone. <laughs> it does. Not just uh, the tech experts right. and the policymakers. We all have a stake in this. We do. It's not just about the technology itself. No. It's about the values we embed in that technology mm -hmm. and the choices we make about how we integrate it into our lives. So how can we prepare for this AI-powered future then? That's a good question. Should we all be learning to code? <laughs> Or studying data science. I think while technical skills are valuable, yeah. the most important thing is to cultivate a mindset of lifelong learning. Hmm. That's interesting. Because the world is changing so rapidly. It is. That the ability to adapt. Yeah. And to acquire new skills is going to be crucial oh for gosh. success in any field. So it's not necessarily about specific skills. Not necessarily, no. But about the ability to be flexible. Exactly. And to evolve alongside the changing landscape. Right. And it's also about fostering critical thinking skills. Oh, okay. We need to be able to evaluate information critically. Yeah. To um, discern fact from fiction. Right. And to make well-informed decisions in a world that's increasingly driven by data and algorithms. That's especially important. Uh, with the rise of AI generated content. Absolutely. It's becoming more and more difficult to figure out what's real it is. than what's not. Media literacy is more important than ever. I agree. We need to be discerning consumers of information, yeah. questioning sources, mm. considering different perspectives, yeah. and developing our own informed opinions. It's almost like we need to become AI detectives. I like that. Constantly evaluating the evidence, filtering out the noise. I'm just like any good detective. Yeah. We need to be adaptable, uh huh, resourceful and always eager to learn new things. It really is a fascinating time to be alive. It is. And challenging. Yeah. The future is full of possibilities. It is. But it's up to us to shape that future. That's right. In a way that benefits everyone. Hmm. Well said. And while we can't predict what lies ahead, yep. one thing is for sure. The journey will be full of wonder and responsibility. I think so. We need to be prepared to embrace the unknown, mm -hmm. to navigate the complexities of this new era. Yeah and to make sure that AI becomes a force for good in the world. 
couldn't have said it better myself. And perhaps most importantly, yeah, we need to remember that AI is a tool. It is. And like any tool, it could be used for good or for bad. That's right. The choice is ours. It's a choice we need to make together. Yes. With wisdom, with right. compassion, yeah. and a deep understanding of the potential consequences. So as we venture further into this uncharted territory, mm -hmm. let's do so with open minds. Yeah. Open hearts. Absolutely. And a shared commitment to creating a future that's both technologically advanced yes. and ethically grounded. Maybe we can uh, shift gears a bit okay. and explore some concrete examples. Yeah, that'd be great. Of how AI is already being used Cheers. to tackle real world problems. That's a great idea. I love to see how this technology is actually making a difference. So where are we already seeing this uh, real world impact? Well, healthcare is a prime example. Yeah. We're seeing AI systems that can analyze medical images mm -hmm. like x-rays and MRIs okay. to detect diseases, hmm. even catching things that human doctors might miss. Wow, early detection is so crucial. It is. Are there any other examples in healthcare? Definitely. AI is also being used to create personalized treatment plans. Oh, how does that work? By analyzing a patient's uh, genetic makeup, lifestyle, medical history, you know, yeah. AI can help doctors develop more effective treatments. That are tailored to the individual. Exactly. It's like truly personalized medicine. Yeah, it's getting us closer. What about other fields? Well, education is another one that's yeah. ripe for transformation. How so? Imagine AI tutors hmm. that can personalize learning experiences for each student. Okay. Adapting to their unique needs and learning styles. That could be huge for students who, you know. Who struggle in traditional classrooms. Right, exactly. It could make education more accessible. Yeah. And engaging for everyone. I would like that. And AI can also be a valuable tool for teachers. Oh, by yeah. automating tasks like grading and lesson planning okay. that frees up more time for them to actually interact with students. So it's not about replacing teachers. No. But empowering them. Exactly. I like that. What about the business world? Oh, AI is transforming industries across the board. Right. Finance, retail. Okay. We're seeing AI systems that can automate tasks like data analysis, mm. customer service, yeah. even financial trading. So it's about more than just efficiency. It's about making smarter decisions. Right, using those data-driven insights. This has been a truly fascinating uh, deep dive. It has. I feel like I have a much better understanding of AI and its potential impact. I'm glad to hear that. It's been a pleasure discussing these ideas with you. As we move forward into this new era of AI, yeah. I think it's so important that we... Uh, stay informed. Yes, yeah, stay informed, stay engaged, and keep asking these tough questions. I agree. And for our listeners... Yeah. The future of AI, it's not set in stone. That's right. It's a future that we're all shaping together. We are. So stay curious. Yes. Stay engaged. Absolutely. And let's work together yeah. to build a future where AI benefits all of humanity. Couldn't agree more.